Hello everyone, this is Jayati Shukla and I welcome you all to Panacea IS channel. In this segment, we will discuss about daily dose of current affairs. So let's get started. So the first news in our today's daily dose is lumpy skin disease. So what is this lumpy skin disease? Lumpy skin disease, that is LSD, is a viral illness caused by a capri pox virus genus in the pox viridae family. The virus mainly spreads through blood sucking vectors such as ticks and mites and mosquitoes. It also spreads through contaminated water, fodder and feed. The infected cattle or bovine creature develop thick nodules on the skin which are often accompanied by debilitating fever and lower milk production and may lead to death as well. Sheep pox virus and goat pox virus are the other members of the genus Capri pox virus. The LSDV mainly affects cattle, cow and its progeny and the Asian water buffaloes. As per the report, the existence of a specific reservoir for the virus is not known, nor it is known as to how and where the virus survives between epidemics. Now what are the symptoms and risks related to the disease? LSDV attacks the circulatory system of an animal and causes vasculitis or inflammation of blood vessels and lesion in various organs like liver, lungs, spleen, lymph nodes, etc. It causes epidermis making the outer surface of the skin to get separated from dermis, the inner layer of the skin. This in turn leads to formation of lumps or nodules on an animal's body. As per the 2019 livestock census, total bovine population of Gujarat is 2.6 crore including 1.49 crore cattle of which 1.14 crore of indigenous breeds and 35.19 lakh exotic and 1.1 crore buffaloes. Majority are of indigenous breeds like Kankresh, Gir, Sahiwal, etc. But the state also has a sizable population of exotic or crossbred Jersey and HF cows. Kankresh, the coveted indigenous cattle breed of Gujarat, known for being resistant to diseases and parasites, has been the worst hit by LSD. Now let's understand the prevalence of disease. According to FAO report, LSD was long restricted to sub-Saharan Africa. However, over the past decade, it is spread to the Middle East and Turkey. From 2015 onward, it has impacted the Balkan countries, Caucasus and Russia. LSD entered India, Bangladesh and China in July 2019. Since then, outbreaks of the disease have been reported from 20 Indian states. The state government has been ring vaccinating healthy cattle heads in the 5 km radius of an outbreak by administering them goat pox vaccine. Animal Husbandry Department has been providing free treatment to infected cattle and has been appealing to dairy farmers and cattle herders to contact it via its helpline number 1962. Now the next topic for today's daily dose is geothermal power. What is the context here? Why it is in news? ONGC readies to pump geothermal power at 14,000 feet in Ladakh. Now what are the key highlights related to the topic? ONGC has begun to generate electricity on a utility scale by harnessing steam ejected from the earth's bowels at Puga Remote Valley located at an elevation of more than 14,000 feet. This will be India's first geothermal energy project and the tallest project in the world. In the first phase, the company will drill a well 1,000 meter deep to run a test of 1 megawatt power plant. The pilot plant supplies the energy and heating needs of neighboring settlements of Tibetan cattle raiding refugee settlements in Sumdu and surrounding areas. Now what is geothermal energy? Geothermal energy is the thermal energy generated by radioactive decay of materials in the earth's interior. Geothermal energy is an energy source that is stored in the form of heat beneath the earth's surface which is clean, renewable, sustainable, carbon-free, continuous, uninterrupted and environment friendly. Now, what are the types of geothermal power plants? There are three basic types of geothermal power plants. First is dry steam plant. 
It uses steam directly from a geothermal reservoir to turn generator turbines. The first geothermal power plant was built in 1904 in Tuscany, Italy, where natural steam erupted from the earth. Next, flash steam plants take high pressure hot water from deep inside the earth and convert it to steam to drive generator turbines. When the steam cools, it condenses to water and is ejected back into the ground to be used again. Most geothermal power plants are flash steam plants. Now the last is binary cycle plants. They transfer the heat from geothermal hot water to another liquid. The heat causes the second liquid to turn to steam, which is used to drive a generator turbine. Now what are the benefits of geothermal energy? Geothermal energy is clean and is available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It is the only renewable energy available 24 into 7 to mankind, not requiring storage and unaffected by day or night or seasonal variance. Hot water from the spring would come handy for space heating. These sites are good tourist attraction. Establishment of this kind of plant would open new work avenues for locals. Now what are the challenges related to geothermal power? Production cost of geothermal electricity is very high and may require rupees 40 crore to produce 1 megawatt for a site that needs to be drilled more than 200 meters. Discouragement because of many private initiatives in the field have been unsuccessful. Geo Syndicate Power Private Limited failed to set up 50 megawatt power plant in Puga in 2005 for generating power. Geothermal hot spots are scattered and are at far away regions than the areas that need energy. Now the next topic is Joint River Commission of India and Bangladesh. What is the context here? India and Bangladesh discussed a wide range of issues related to the major common rivers such as Ganga, Tista and several smaller rivers during the 38th meeting of the Joint River Commission that is JRC. So what are the highlights related to the news? 38th meeting of ministerial level Joint River Commission of India and Bangladesh held at New Delhi on 25th August 2022. Both sides finalized text of MO on interim water sharing of Kushiara River. This meeting was held after a long gap of 12 years. The two sides also discussed exchange of flood related data and information, river bank protection works, common basin management and also the river interlinking projects of India. India and Bangladesh share 54 rivers of which Seven rivers have been identified earlier for developing framework of water sharing agreements on priority. During the meeting, it has been agreed to widen this area of ongoing cooperation by including eight more rivers for data exchange. Now, what is Joint River Commission? The Joint River Commission of India and Bangladesh was constituted in the year 1972 as a bilateral mechanism to address issues of mutual interest on common border transboundary rivers. After that, an ad hoc arrangement on sharing Tista waters was made in 1983, with India receiving 39% of the water and Bangladesh 36% of it. Ganga Water Treaty was signed in 1996 to share water of Ganga between India and Bangladesh. Now comes the other important news. Justice Uday Umesh Lalit takes oath as 49th Chief Justice of India. What are the key points here? President of India Draupadi Murmu administered the oath of office at a ceremony held at Rashtrapati Bhavan. Justice Lalit will have a brief tenure of less than three months as the CGI and he will retire on November 8, 2022. The retirement age of judges of the Supreme Court is 65. He is the second CGI to be nominated immediately from the bar without first serving as a High Court judge. Only Justice S.M. Sikri, who served as CGI from January 1971 to April 1973, was chosen straight from the bar. Justice Lalit was among the majority of the Constitution bench judges to rule triple talaq as unconstitutional. Now the next important news is Light Tank Zoravar. Project Zoravar is the induction of indigenous light tanks for quicker deployment and movement in high altitude areas. 
Now what are the key points related to it? Zoravar is designed to operate in varying terrain from high altitude areas and marginal terrains to island territories. It will be highly transportable for rapid deployment to meet any operational situation and feature technologies including artificial intelligence, drone integration, active protection systems and a high degree of situational awareness. It will have equal firepower as the present tank including missile firing. The project has been named Zoravar after Zoravar Singh Kehluria, a military general who served under Jammu's Raja Gulab Singh, known as Conqueror of Ladakh. Now the next is Vishnu Girl project. What is the context here? World Bank panel MERS investigation into complaints against Vishnu Girl hydropower project. What are the key points? World Bank is considering a plea by residents of Heart Village. Chamuni district, Uttarakhand, to investigate environmental damage from the under construction Vishnugarh People Coated Hydroelectric Project, that is VPHEP. The project is being built on the Tehri Hydropower Development Corporation, THDC. The project is primarily funded by the World Bank and was sanctioned in 2011. It is proposed to be completed in June 2023. About 40% of the funds for the $792 million project, that is 64,000 crore rupees approximately, had already been disbursed. Residents in their complaint to the bank panel have said, muck dumping from the dam threatens the local Lakshmi Narayan temple, which is deemed to be of historical and cultural importance by Archaeological Survey of India, that is ASI. Now the next important news is Putta Swami vs Union of India 2017 case. August 24 has passed, marking 5 years since a 9th judge bench of the Supreme Court of India delivered a crucial judgment in the case of Justice K.S. Putta Swami retired vs Union of India. What are the key points related to it? This judgment formally recognized the right to privacy as being a fundamental right stemming from the right to life and personal liberty guaranteed under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. The bench also held that while the right to privacy is intrinsic to an individual's ability to exercise bodily autonomy, it is still not an absolute right. Now the next important news is Paddy Dwarfing. What is the context here? Weeks after a mystery disease hit the paddy crop, causing dwarfing of the plants in Punjab and Haryana, the scientists at Punjab Agricultural University, PAU, decoded the mystery. Scientists claim that southern rice black streaked dwarf virus is the reason behind the dwarfing. Virus named after southern China where it was first reported in 2001. The disease causes damage to the roots of the plants, making them black and stunting their growth as the plant cannot pull the nutrients from the soil. 2% of the total paddy area in the two states, Punjab and Haryana, has been affected. According to a preliminary analysis by the Indian Agricultural Research Institute. So this was for today. If you have any doubt regarding the topic, please mention it in the comment section.